So in this video, we're going to look at Fibonacci numbers. Uh, this is a special kind of number that's been around since about the year 1200, uh, invented by a guy named called Fibonacci, uh, at least in Western mathematics. And um, these numbers show up in a lot of different ways. They're actually used in computer science and biology and art and um, different areas like that. But why we're interested in them, first of all, they have a recursive definition. And secondly, there are a lot of different ways you can implement them. And because this is a unit on algorithms, I'm going to show you some different options for doing it. Now here's a definition, and you'll notice something right away. Um, well, so we define Fibonacci of 0 to be 0, Fibonacci of 1 to be 1. And then for a number bigger than 1, Fibonacci of n is Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2. So there are two recursive calls, not just one. Now with the simple sum we did last time, there was just one recursive call and it was at the end. Um, that's sometimes called tail recursion and it's very similar to a while loop as we saw. This is something else, it's more complicated and it's going to take more thought to come up with alternate ways of uh, computing these. But so, um, okay, let's get started by looking at our demo here and um, I'm going to open that. And here you can see I have different ways of computing it. And I'm going to start with Fibonacci of 5 recursively. And here I'm showing all the recursive calls. We'll get into this in a minute. Um, but you can see Fibonacci of 5 is 5. And um, let's, they, Fibonacci gets big very fast. So if I do Fibonacci of 20, first of all, it takes a long time. And secondly, it's, it's a pretty big number already, uh, 6765, and this grows even faster as the numbers get bigger. Okay, let's go over and take a look at the code. So um, here we are, view the code, and here's our recursive version. Uh, by the way, we I've put in here to keep the goal that we're going for less than or equal to 40, because larger than that, things could really blow up. So, um, my pattern here is I have my button that I push that sets up the recursive call, and then I have my actual recursive function. So I get the goal, and um, recall I call my function recursive fib of goal, and here's recursive fib. So um, I'm putting out to give the trace I showed, I'm printing the word fib and whatever the goal is, that's my argument here. And then I'm going, okay, if the goal is zero, then we'll return zero. If the goal is one, we'll return one. Otherwise, return recursive fib of goal minus one plus recursive fib of goal minus two. So you can see that it exactly implements um, the recursive definition that I was showing you. Okay. Now, here's what happens when I do recursive fib uh, with argument 5. So first of all, there are going to be two recursive calls, 4 and 3. When I do the call to 4, I'll do 3 and 2, then add those. When I do 3, I do 2 and 1. When I do 2, I do 1 and 0, and this 2 does 1 and 0. Down here, I do fib of 3, which for which I need fib of 2 and fib of 1, and for 2 I need 1 and 0. So if you think this can be thought of as a kind of tree structure lying on its side, and the leaves, the, the ends of these uh, paths, are all fib of 1 and fib of and 0 because those we know. We don't have to do any other computations. And also notice that, for example, here I have fib of 3, but I also had to repeat it up here because of the way uh, the structure is. And um, if I were going to do fib of 6, then I would have fib of 5 plus fib of 4. This whole piece would be repeated, and so on. As, as I go to bigger numbers, much bigger pieces are being re repeated, and I'd be doing fib of 3, goodness knows how many times, and you can actually count them in the window of the uh, recursion I did. So this shows the order that things get done in. So I'm starting with the call to fib of 4, and when I do that, um, there are two recursive calls, and I do fib of 3 first, and then I do fib of 2, 
fib of one and zero, finish that, come back, finish this guy, come back, finish this guy. Well, and this needs two calls, so then when I finish that, I come back and I'm done there. So I've already done nine calls, and now I'm going to come over here and do fib of three. And again, you can trace through the order that everything is done in. Okay, as I said, there's a lot of um, redundancy here, a lot of repeating the work. So here's an idea. Instead of um, recomputing things like fib of three or fib of two over and over again, what we're going to do is set up an array. And we'll initially fill it all with zeros, except that fib of one will be one. And um, so this is position zero, one, two, etc. Okay, and then um, what I'm going to do is when I compute a value, so like fib of two, I'll store it in the array in that position. So fib of two is one, and then fib of three is the sum of these two, so it's two. Fib of four is the sum of these two, so it's three. And fib of five is the sum of these two, so it's five. And what the code is going to do is check and see if the number has already been computed, then it won't recompute it. Okay, so if we come over here, you can see um, here's our button for array fib and um, our function for array fib, uh, fib array of zero equals zero, fib array of one equals one. And then we continue on. So, okay, let's um, give it a shot. Go back over to Excel. And um, we want our form. So let's run this guy. Okay, and let's give it five and try array fib. Yay. Okay, so that's five. Um, I think we did 20 before. You can see how much faster it is. And, um, of course, the, I slowed the other one down with the printing, but even so. And I can do a much bigger number. Let, let's just try 30, which I wouldn't dare to do with the recursive version. Oops, too big. Okay, so let's end. Okay, so 30 is too big already, um, which gives you a feeling for how fast it grows. All right, I'm going to close this. I'll reopen it when I want to do another example. And um, let's continue. So the array fib, you can tell, is already much more efficient than the um, recursive one. But I could go even further. Because if, if you think about it, um, I'm only ever using the last two values. And I never go back any further. So if I can somehow remember the last two values, that's all I need to do. And the loop fib actually does that. And here you can see what it does. Um, it starts out with three values, fib of n minus 1 and fib of n minus 2. And um, it adds those to get fib of n. And then what it does is it um, copies those into here adds them and gets this, copies this and this into here, adds and gets this, copies, adds, etc. So um, it's always computing the next one and then moving the other two down. So it's always got n minus 1 and n minus 2 ready for the next step. Okay, let's run it again. And um, this time I'll do it with the loop version. And let's try 20. Okay, and uh, let's go over to the code. Okay. So here it is using a loop. Um, you can see for zero and one. Otherwise, we set up our loop. Um, we add fn minus 1 and fn minus 2, and then adjust the um, fn minus 1 and fn minus 2 to be the, the two most recent values. Then we add again, and we keep going until we've done enough iterations. Okay, there's one more um, 
version I want to show you. So recall the recursive Fibonacci. And here's the order of the calls that we were doing. Now what I'm going to do is combine the array idea with the recursive one. So I'll use a recursive function, but I'll save the values in an array. And if I see the values already been computed, I won't do the recursive call. So uh, let me show you that in action here. Um, over to Excel. Oh, I've got to start this guy up. Okay, we'll do five. And this is called memoizing. If you remember the list of recursive calls from the recursive version, or maybe I'll just do it here, you can see how much longer it is. And the bigger a number I use, the bigger the difference will be. So um, if we look at the code, let's go to Oh, we are. All right. So what we do is we say, okay, if um, the same kind of beginning, if the goal is bigger than the max goal, we change it and so on. Uh, then we start out with our fib array of 0 equals 0. And actually, we set them all to 0 and then set fib array of 1 to 1. And we call memo fib. And memo fib here says, if the goal is bigger than zero and the fib array is zero, we haven't computed that one yet. So let's go ahead and get the fib array of the goal by doing two recursive calls and um, putting it into the array. And in any case, the thing we return is the entry in the array. So if you look at the example here, I start out by calling fib of four, which hasn't been done yet, so I need to do my calls. The first thing I need is fib of three, which hasn't been done yet, so I need my two calls. I need fib of 2, which hasn't been done yet. So I do these um, two calls, and these are ready. So I get those and add them up and store it in the array. Go get fib of 1, and I finish this one. And now I also need fib of 2, but when I check the array, it's already been completed. So I don't have to redo it. I just add these, and that gives me fib of 4. And then I also need fib of 3, but that one... Um, was computed up here. It will be in the array, so I don't need to do any work. I just need to read it back and finish my computation. If you look at the structure here, what I'm doing, we do this initial backbone to go down and get the um, the, the bottom version to, to compute fib of 2 for the first time. But then after that, we're only doing each one once. And other than that, we're just reading what we need. So essentially, the uh, number of calls is about two times whatever the number is we are uh, computing fib of instead of an exponential number that we were seeing before. OK, our next topic is going to be taking a much closer look at sorting with different algorithms. So that's next.